Hi guys, today I'm going to um, do a sort of a tutorial where I cover our K1 motor, our PP378 battery, PP768 battery. I'm going to explain to you how we bundle the motor and the batteries, uh, go through some of the features, and then I'm going to also cover all of our adapters and show you how best to motorize your particular watercraft. So let's get started. Uh, we're going to start with the motor right away and the motor you'll notice is about two inches shorter than our J2 motor and uh, it's still the same output so you're getting about a one horsepower output out of this motor. There are lots of features in this motor that we've built over the years to make it more robust, make it last longer, make it quieter and make it a more efficient motor. The shorter motor results in a quieter motor because you've got a shorter shaft. We have a full anodized aluminum body that helps us with heat dissipation so the motor runs more efficiently. Uh, we still have the same power shot outlet so you're still getting that same output out of this very small motor but it is quieter, it is more robust, the electronics have been improved dramatically so jamming and when you get into trouble with your motor you're less likely to damage this motor than uh, previous uh, iterations of the motor. Now we pair this motor uh, with either our smaller positively buoyant battery uh, which is our PP378 uh, or our bigger uh, 768 watt hour battery and uh, if you've been following us you'll know this is a new battery for us. It's a much bigger battery, it's a lithium uh, iron phosphate battery so you've got a 10 year shelf life on this battery and the way we're selling this product is either pairing it up with a smaller battery or with the bigger battery depending on your use, depending on how long you want to stay out there and uh, depending on what watercraft you're putting it on. So let's cover some of the features, some of the new features uh, of the 378. Now we released the 768 um, a few months ago. We've built a lot of those same features into the 378 now. Uh, you'll notice right off the bat that your LED lights are now white instead of the blue. That was the previous version and that indicates that it is the version 4 of the 378 and the first version of the 768 batteries. These batteries are much smarter than the old batteries. We've got all uh, kinds of additional features. One of the most obvious ones you'll notice is how quickly you can walk through your speeds and how much more smoothly the motor operates as opposed to before. So you can go from speed 0 or speed 1 to 12 with a very quick click of your button and you'll get right up to that speed 12 immediately and dropping down is the same. We've also added a warp feature, a warp speed feature, which is essentially going from 0 to full speed with a double click of your forward button. And that's a popular option we know you've been asking for. Uh, so now you have that built into both of these batteries. Uh, you still have the quad click option, so you're able to run your battery using just the kill switch and tapping that kill switch four times, one, two, three, four, and you'll get that motor running at about half speed in case you lose your remote or in case something happens to your remote. So we still have that feature built into both of these batteries. You'll notice on the bigger battery we do have these uh, standard T-tracks. Uh, you'll, you're able to use those to mount your um, cameras, your rod holders and whatever else you want to mount onto this battery. It is a bigger, heavier battery. It is not a buoyant battery so you do want to strap this battery down. Uh, the smaller battery is buoyant again uh, but you still want to strap this down obviously to your kayak in case you have an accident or something goes wrong. You always want to wear your kill switch so if you do fall off your battery turns off and your kayak doesn't run off on you. If you're trying to decide which battery is best for you and how to package this, we package the motor with either the smaller battery or the larger battery. Smaller battery package is the outboard, uh, the K1 outboard kit and the larger battery package is the K1 Angler Pro uh, outboard kit. Um, if you're on a paddleboard, if you're on a smaller kayak where space and weight are really an issue for you, uh, you want to go with a smaller battery. The small battery will run your K1 motor for about an hour at full speed, continuous use and up to about 12 hours of trolling speed. The bigger battery will run your motor at full speed for about two hours and for 24 hours at trolling speed. So you got to sort of decide what you want to do, how long are you staying out in the water and also remember that the bigger battery gives you a 13 speed as opposed to 12 speeds you get on the smaller battery. So uh, if, if you're out there for a, a full day on and off and you're cruising around a bay or you're in a small lake, for the most part the small battery will do. Uh, if you're a, a tournament fishing uh, guy and you want to be out there all day, you don't want to worry about the battery, you know, you go with the bigger battery. Both of these batteries will comfortably fit in most of the, the hatches and fishing kayaks. Uh, of course the smaller one will fit nicely under a seat or uh, in a crate or whatever else you've got on your kayak. 
So I'm going to cover a couple more features of these two batteries and uh, some sort of frequently asked questions and things you may come up with. Firstly, we'll start off with the remote. Uh, the remote, like I said, is Bluetooth connected to these batteries. If you're connected to your battery, you'll hear your battery beep when you press the stop button. You'll hear the battery beep. And right now this remote is synced to the larger battery. So we're going to take that kill switch off, take this kill switch off. You can see the, the batteries go off and uh, what I want to do now is sync this remote to this battery so you guys can see how that's done. So we're going to put that magnet on there. You'll see that if I press the stop button, nothing will happen. But to sync it, we're going to press the stop button three times. One, two, three, forward, reverse, stop. And you give it about three seconds and you'll see that this remote is now synced to this battery. So that's the procedure you follow for syncing your remote to your battery. And if I take this magnet off now and put this magnet on here, you'll see that this remote is no longer synced to this battery. Now, if you wanted to sync same remote to multiple batteries, you can have your kill switch on multiple batteries, have them activated, and within 20 seconds, if you do that same key sequence, you'll have the same remote synced to multiple batteries. So those are commonly asked questions. So yes, you can sync one remote to multiple batteries. You've got about a 20 second window to do your uh, programming. If you go over that 20 seconds, you take your kill switch off, you wait for the battery to reset, and you do that again. Uh, that is one of the features of these batteries. Um, with the smaller battery, you still do have the auxiliary output in the back of the battery. So the auxiliary output allows you to plug in 12 volt and 5 volt accessories into your battery. So if you want to charge your phone, if you want to run some lights, or if you've got uh, some other smaller 12 volt or 5 volt um, devices or gadgets you want to run, you can do that simultaneously um, on this smaller battery. One of the other improvements you'll notice on the K1 motors are new uh, connector nuts. They're much easier to grip, they're much easier to connect, so now you can connect your motor to your battery with much more confidence. So one last thing I want to cover is compatibility and um, it's, it's a little bit confusing so I'll try and be as clear about that as possible. The batteries are backwards and forwards compatible with K1 and J2 motors. So you'll be able to use these batteries with your K1 motor and if you have a previous motor from us, the J2 motors, you'll be able to use these batteries. Your K1 motor will work with all of our older outboard batteries. So if you do want to just buy the motor and use your old batteries, that's completely fine. You're able to do that. Um, the only thing you can't do is use these new batteries with the J1 motors that are about five years old at this point, I think. So if you do want to do that, we do have a way to upgrade those those motors to allow you to use them with these new batteries. There is a link below in the video that you can follow to allow you to do that. So what I'm going to do now is walk you guys through all of the different adapters we offer and show you how easy it is to motorize different kayaks, different paddle boards, and different small watercraft with the K1 motor. Um, you'll notice right off the bat that we have the same four hole pattern that we've had in all of our motors up to now. So you'll be able to use some of the old adapters you've had. If you've got adapters for a J1 or, or a J2 motor, you'll probably still be able to use some of those adapters. But what's really important is that the four hole pattern on all of these adapters remains the same. And you'll see it on this motor, for instance, I've got one of our flat plate adapters. It'll slide right into that motor and allow you to mount this motor uh, to pretty much any flat surface. Now this is a great adapter for DIYs uh, and if you're putting this motor on uh, anything that requires a flat surface. Uh, you can also use that same four hole pattern to make your own adapter. So if you have a situation where you want to put this motor on your own rudder or you've got a skeg or something that where we don't offer an adapter, we actually have the PDF template for that hole pattern on our website. You can download that, glue it on to whatever you want to cut out and it's a quarter inch gap here. Um, if you've got a rudder, a skeg, or whatever it is, if it's a quarter inch or close to that, you're able to cut that whole pattern out and do a DIY adapter for yourself. Aside from that, we offer more than 20 different adapters for a variety of watercraft. Right now, I'm gonna start off with the paddle boards and the skegs. So we have our flat mount adapter, like I said, that is to allow you to do DIY projects. If you wanna stick this to a 
a moving dock or whatever uh, you've got going on, you can use that adapter, very simple. We have our flip and lock adapter. Uh, this is a common um, fin box that's found on um, uh, iRocker paddle boards, on ghillie paddle boards, and a number of other paddle boards. Uh, we have our, uh, what we call a US fin adapter. You'll find this adapter commonly on hard boards and some of the higher end um, inflatable paddle boards. And then we have our slide and lock adapter. Uh, and again, this is very commonly found on some inflatable kayaks and a lot of the inflatable paddle boards. If you don't have a fin box on your paddleboard, or if you want to add a fin box, we also do offer uh, a, a glue-on fin box that you can purchase, and you can glue this onto your paddleboard or onto your uh, kayak uh, as a way of motorizing your um, paddleboard or kayak. Now, I'm going to install this particular one on the motor right now, and I'm going to slide that into the fin box so you guys can see how quick and easy that is. So you get your K1 motor and your PP378 battery in the mail, and um, here we go. So you take that adapter, you fit it right over the motor, like so. The nuts and bolts ship with your battery and motor in the kit. So you've got two in the front, two in the back. Goes right in there. A little bit difficult doing this backwards, but we'll get it in. Oops. One there. One there, one there. So that's how easy it is to get your um, fin adapter onto your motor. And from there, if this was your kayak or paddleboard, you would just be sliding that in, locking in, and you're good to get on the water like that. So the next set of adapters I want to cover with you guys are what we call through-haul adapters. And that includes all of the adapters that fit into uh, pedal drive openings in your kayak, uh, your dry pod adapters, and pretty much anything that goes into the opening in front of your feet in the, in the kayak. So uh, we're going to start off uh, with our through, um, pod adapters. So we've got a bonafide pod adapter here. Uh, this is us basically putting our four-hole pattern adapter onto a bonafide dry pod. Um, from there, we've got same sort of setup for a feel-free kayak. So these will fit into a feel-free kayak. Now, if you do have your own dry pod and we don't build an adapter for it, we do sell the components for you to DIY your own pod adapter, essentially. So we do sell all of these components uh, as a kit on our website. You can buy that, you can attach it to virtually anything, and you get the same front bumper and the same four-hole pattern that you're able to put your, uh, your motor on. Um, from there, we have um, our pedal drive adapters. This is for a boat inflatable. So any of the boat inflatable kayaks that have the apex drive, very simply, you slide that onto your K1 motor, the same four hole pattern, and within seconds, you can motorize your boat kayaks, your boat inflatable paddle boards. Um, we do also have, this is probably the most popular one. This is the, the pedal drive adapter, which covers all of the Mirage drives, um, the Vibe, X-Drive kayaks, again, same installation, Vibe X-Drive kayaks, Pelican HD kayaks, uh, Lightning kayaks, pretty much any kayak that uses that, uh, that Mirage Drive technology. With that and some of the kayaks, you will need a reduced shroud to go onto your kayaks, so it enables you to fit that motor into that opening. It's not necessary for all of them, but we do ship this reduced shroud with that adapter. So you just simply swap out that shroud and it'll allow you to get into the opening of those kayaks. And that's it for our through-haul adapters. Last but not least, I'm going to cover our Transom adapters. And these are adapters that will typically mount to the rear of your kayak or paddleboard or dinghy or whatever else you're trying to motorize. I was gonna start off with our power pole adapter. So pretty much any kayak that has that four hole power pole adapter um, set up on the back. You're able to use this adapter. Uh, we've already got the whole pattern sorted out. We've got some uh, gnarled uh, bolts there for you to uh, secure this. This adapter does have the kick-up feature, so if you do hit something, it'll unlock and it'll get your motor out of the water. Or if you want to pull your motor out of the water, there is a cord that allows you to pull the motor out of the water. It does lock in for reverse as well. There is also a locking mechanism on this adapter. So if you do want to use our steering systems, and if you don't have a rudder on your kayak, for instance, you can pull out that pin and you're able to spin your motor with this. I'm going to install one of these on the motor and show you guys how that works as well. From there, we have our transom adapter. 
The transom adapter comes with two length handles, a 12 inch and a 24 inch. You use that for steering. And like sort of old fashioned transom um, motors, you're able to put this on pretty much anything with a flat back and screw these down nice and tight. It is adjustable in height. You're able to move this up and down. So if you want to get deeper or more shallow, that is definitely possible. And it does have a kick up feature as well. Although it's not automatic, you do have to press this lever to adjust uh, the angle of the motor in the water. We do offer a new canoe specific adapter as well. So this is for new canoes uh, that have uh, the steering and the rudder mechanism on the back. And of course we have, last but not least, and this is the most DIY adapter we have, is our universal kayak and canoe adapter. And this will take some installation work. And this is, these are for kayaks that are harder to use any other adapter on. Not so much plug and play. You do have to, uh, you, you do have to be pretty handy to install one of these on your kayak, but they do offer a very flexible range of angles and lengths and so on that you can use to virtually get this on any kayak. We do offer a variety of steering options. On this one, you'll notice we've got um, a pole steering option installed on here already. So if you're gonna put this on and you wanna steer it, this is the way to, uh, to do it. Um, aside from that, I'll install one of these on a motor uh, just very quickly so you guys can see how that happens as well. We'll put these aside and we're going to take our power pole adapter here. We're going to put it on this motor. One thing you will notice on the K1 motors, you do have a spacer here. So when we were doing the, the fin adapters and the rudders, we were able to leave that in place. But with these guys, we need to take that out. So that just snaps off very easily. Your power pole gets on there. Just like that. And again, the same four nuts and bolts will secure this motor to your power pole adapter and you're on the water within minutes. So that's a quick rundown of our K1 motor, the different batteries you can use to run it. And most of our adapters that we sell, uh, we do have adapters coming out all the time. So check our website for new adapters that are coming out. If you're not sure which adapter fits best on your kayak, we have an entire website dedicated to that. It's www.bigspeed.info and that will list the most common, most popular kayaks on the market and the adapters that fit them best. Uh, aside from that, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us on um, social media or info at bigspeed.com. Um, we're there to answer your questions. Uh, thank you and see you guys on the water.